So, welcome to week 10 then, while well, the main focus of most people's attention this week, while we're on the Cheltenham Festival over on the jump side of the game, we've got an action-packed week on the flat as well with classics and Arc de Triumphs and all sorts of things and today on day one we are at four different tracks we've got racing from Haydock, Leopardstown, Doncaster and Newmarket so let's have a look what we've got first of all at Haydock where the big race there kicks the week off is the Betfred Sprint Cup and um, that's a six furlong sprint and it looks like it's going to be another one of those lickety split blink and you miss it type jobs Paul Rhodes has got the top rated one in this Airwolf but Django has got new tricks which is only rated a couple of pound inferior also dead red demons in there for joshua southern kinky boots for darren thompson also looks to have some good chances so that should be a pretty good start to the week quite a small field though compared to what we sometimes get in these sprint races but it should be a pretty good one the second race at haydock the second and final race at haydock is a 0 to 100 handicap it's the old borough cup and the top rated one there is proud morazan for darren thompson but wonder of you for derek hinton who's also got starters orders in there to give him a pretty big Shout of a chance in that one, you'd think. And the smoke, the smoking man for Graham Clutterbuck thinks he thinks that one will be going a little bit too far. But smoke on the water, a winner three times ago. Also, looks as though could have a bit of a chance in that one. So that's like a wide open race there. Then we'll be over to Ireland for a couple of Group Ones. The Red Mills Irish Champion Stakes, first of all, is a 10 furlong event. And Grand Gesture for Stephen Rann and Young Guy Zelladay for Darren Thompson are both top rated on 118. But Django has got favourite son who's been third in its last three times there. I'm looking for a change of look this time. Lady Jane Felsham for Paul Rhodes is also in there as well as Zartax for John Morgan and made to be broken for Joshua Sutherland. That should be a thrilling race and plenty in there with chances in that one. The second of the two races at Leopardstown is for the Phillies and the Mares. This is the Coolmore Pegasus Matron Stakes. It's over a mile and there's a huge field for this. A little bit of a too big a field really and maybe there needs to be a second mile race this week I'm probably in group three standard or listed or something to get one or two of these into a different race for next season but Django's down under will be a pretty warm order with three wins on the trot I can't remember too many horses managing to win four on the trot in the start of the six league so Django will be hopefully trying to do that with down under but there'll be one or two in there trying to stop him looking down the list there's plenty in there that look pretty good but there's nothing that stands out as a, as a real main big danger and I would think that um, probably faux par for Stephen Rand would be the, um, the one to give him most to think of but it looks like it could be a red hot race that one despite the fact that it's a pretty big field so then we'll be over to Doncaster for six good quality races at Doncaster for the St Ledger Festival there and it's the Flying Childers first of all for the Flying Two Year Olds over five furlongs Maxa Soprano has already won a few times this season won the Queen Mary she'll be in there trying to win that one she's rated three pound better than John Morgan's Midnight Party he's only had the one run zoom to the moon for Joshua Southern is also in there but the form pick certainly looks to be the Paul Rhodes top rated Master Soprano after that we'll go to the other extreme with the two and a quarter mile Doncaster Cup. Quite a few of the big names here. No Koyak though and Oi Toy for Paul Rhodes will be the uh, warm order again there. Wait your turn for Joshua Southern is also rated at 117 and Thunder for, for the same trainer Joshua Southern is only rated £2 inferior at 115 so plenty in there with chances you would think two miles for Derek Hinton has won twice already this season as well and won't be too far away then after that we'll be having the two year olds again the Champagne Stakes over seven furlongs a disappointing field this time only five of them but they've probably all been scared off by the monster that is Ghost Zapper already rated 122 according to official ratings he's got £29 in hand of the rest of the field so pretty much think we're um, Racing for second there, and any one of those could take second place, but Ghost Zapper would be expected to win that one in a bit of a canter. Then we'll get the big sprint handicap, the Portland handicap. Not sure why this isn't a two-runner race, to be honest, because the Portland handicap always has a big field, and we've only got about a dozen. So this one, I think, should have been a two-runner race. Hopefully next season that'll be rectified. Black Dead Redemption for Joshua Sutherland is the top weight. Oaklander, just four pounds below. That one looks like it got a bit of a chance as well, but you're going to be drawn towards some of those ones who are getting a bit of weight, who've got some good form. Ying Yang Yugis for... Vinnie Gerard and Cincy Cariosis for the same trainer have both won already this season and bombastic for David Robertson looks nicely weighted as well so that could be a pretty good race after that one it's the big one at Doncaster the final classic of the season the Ladbrook St Ledger one mile and six furlongs of course editorial and star of David both from the Paul Road stable are both rated 116 but Morazan Zegge 
Osborne. Darren Thompson is only rated one pound inferior at 115, so that could be in there with a chance. I did it my way for Molly at Surf, which also looks good, but the one that could be the one to take a big look at are a red rag for David Robertson, who looks to be going very well. Elron for Joshua Sutherland, and then you've got that slopes the cat for John Morgan. He doesn't seem to think he's got much of a chance, but John Morgan doesn't run horses that haven't got a chance, so you'd have to keep an eye on that one as well. The final race at Doncaster is the Argriago UK Tractors Nursery, which is a six furlong nursery. Paul Rhodes has managed to sneak one in there off 94. So he will probably be looking to take that one. Richie Blackmore was unlucky last week, beaten by a nostril. And uh, Treat Elite from the Stu Gray Stable. I think he thinks that's one of his stable stars. So he'll be hoping that that one can go close. But Cryogenic really does look to be a group horse in a handicap to me. Then we'll finish today with two group races for two year olds over at Newmarket. The Shadwell Phillies Mile, first of all, and Bay of Biscaya for Darren Thompson's a top one there. But Mistress Foo for Paul Rhodes. Looks like it could be a good one as well. Now also, you've got Indian Blessing for John Morgan, as well as the maiden Miss Fapian for the same trainer. So that one looks a wide open race as well. And then we'll end day one with the Judmont Royal Lodge Stakes again. A disappointingly small field. Perhaps there's too many two-year-old races this week. And the young master for Hans Jones is top rated there. A true Metropolitan for John Morgan and Magic Marvel for Django. Shouldn't be too far away. You've got lots of big names in there. Joshua Sutherland, Steve Ram, Paul Rhodes, all got runners. And you don't very often see Paul Rhodes at the lowest rated horse in a group two race. That'll be your day one then. Doug's doing the commentary for the whole lot this week. Um, and so I'll hand you over to him now then. Enjoy the day's racing.